Welcome to the Crawford House Garden on Maryville College campus. Today we are addressing the topic of biotechnology, specifically using recombinant DNA to produce transgenic plants. While the crops grown here on the Maryville College Garden are both organic and not genetically modified, most people don't realize that in the U.S. 80% of the soybeans and 86% of all the corn is genetically modified. It has been the industrialization of agriculture that has led to the need for genetically modified crops. Now, when many people hear the phrase genetically modified, they become fearful, thinking of the modified crops will cause human health problems. Today, we will look at the science of genetically modified foods. Perhaps the most extensively utilized genetically modified crop is Roundup Ready crops, kind of like this corn produced by Monsanto. Now, Roundup Ready crops are crops that are resistant to a common herbicide, Roundup so that when this is applied, it'll kill all the weeds, but not kill what you're growing, corn. So let's go figure out how Monsanto made Roundup Ready crops. Producing Roundup resistant corn is a multi-step process utilizing a species of bacteria with a natural resistance to the herbicide and another bacteria that can insert its own DNA into the host plant's genome. Scientists first realized the possibility of Roundup resistance when a species of bacteria was found thriving in a waste pool where Roundup was present. Once the gene responsible for this resistance was located, it was isolated, as seen at the top of the figure. Next, a bacteria known for its ability to insert its own DNA into a host genome was selected, an agrobacterium species. A small circular portion of this agrobacterium's DNA, or plasmid, was isolated as seen at the bottom of the figure. The isolated agrobacterium plasmid and the isolated resistance gene were then combined forming a new larger plasmid. The new plasmid was then reinserted into the agrobacterium. Scientists also modified the remainder of the bacterium's DNA so that it could not cause the natural disease it produces. The newly transformed and tame bacterium was then introduced to a culture of plant tissue. The bacteria infected the cells, thereby inserting the resistance conveying gene into the corn cell's genome. From here, the culture of tissue was stimulated to divide, spreading the new gene into daughter cells and eventually to the entire developing corn plant. This plant and others then grew and eventually produced new corn seed carrying Roundup resistance. So what we have outlined today is the process that scientists use to alter the genome of a crop to increase its yield. Such bioengineering technology is critical as human populations increase. As the health concerns of genetically modified crops, the U.S. National Academies of Scientists and numerous other national and international organizations have concluded that there are no adverse health effects from eating genetically modified crops. However, there are some environmental concerns. Excessive use of pesticides on genetically modified crops like Roundup on Roundup ready crops may have adverse effects on aquatic organisms. So today our take home message is that biotechnology is both useful and necessary to provide food for our expanding population. These crops themselves are safe, but we must be aware of the possible indirect harmful environmental impacts.